Hello everyone and welcome back to another Spiritual Thursday. I'm your host, Veteran Mountain Man, and we're going to talk about more of the harvest again this week. As we are in the heart of the harvest season, and I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to get out there and do as much harvesting as they can, uh, we have pears that should be ready to be made into pear cider. And I know many of you are going to be like, well, but wait a minute, you make apple cider, not pear cider. Well, yes and no. To be fair, pears have been used to make pear cider or even perry, which is a fermented pear cider, for hundreds of years, just as commonly as apples were. In fact, uh, you even use the same process. Now, one of the things I would recommend you do is if you're going to make a pear cider, you get at least two to three different varieties of pear. And I would recommend at least one be either large reds or large greens. Uh, you can then get something else that you want that's got some more delicate or a different type of flavor to it. But the large reds and the large greens actually make a good base fruit for a pear cider or a perry. You will then want to let them sweeten for about two or three days after picking. And then, uh, you know, the standard crusher and press, just like you would for apples. And you also want to let them soak in some water for about a half hour or so before you run them through the crusher and press. I have done uh, other videos about apple cider, and I have included links to fruit processing equipment in those. If you haven't watched them, you can go back and watch them, or you can uh, take a look through my channel and take a look at everything I've done, because there's quite a bit in there. But the big thing is, is that when winter comes, the easiest way to have fruit on hand, or at least fruit juice, is a pressed cider. And that means that you're going to have to press the fruit, because... The only type of pressed cider you have commonly in grocery stores anymore is apple. And that's just because apple was so prominent. Everybody had apple trees. Not everybody had pear trees. Not everybody made pear cider. But it is just as good. It can be phenomenal in the right setting. And it's a great way to help diversify your diet at, during the harvest season and during your winter by having pear cider as well as apple cider available. Well, thank you all again for joining me on this spiritual Thursday. And I know that this harvest season I am pushing the connection to the earth and the natural farming concepts quite hard. Uh, we'll get on to other topics here soon. I'm uh, probably going to keep these up until just after the equinox, and at which point then I think we'll start diversifying into some other topics again. However, I did want to make sure that all of my followers and listeners were thinking about all of these different harvest things and were actually looking into doing them. And the best way to do that is to talk to you about them. Well, thank you again for joining me. Please remember to upvote and follow me on Vidme. And also, come on over to unapologeticpagan.com, where there is quite a bit of pagan news and discussion of spiritual theories and topics. And not all of it is as esoteric or bizarre as you would think. Thank you all, and have yourselves a spiritual Thursday. <laughs>